brackets to <coughs> yeah i thank the organizers for uh, inviting me to this uh, work this uh, conference in which we are deliberating upon how various facets of technology can help the cause of development and how innovation is driving development in whatever we do today uh, as has been mentioned this is panel is primarily to look into what ICT can do and the initial introduction has laid down the broad contours of the kind of issues that will be discussed but they have given a very crisp and a very exhaustive uh, introduction of the role ICT is playing today and has the potential to play for development I work for the Department of Information Technology, Government of India. I am in the part of the National E-Governance Plan. I look after projects like uh, Common Services Centers and E-District. So prim primarily, I would be focusing on what ICT can do for the, for the sake of governance. Because today, as we look into all aspects of uh, our social life, uh, we find that there is an increasing demand from citizens for better services, for improved access to public services, for using, uh, for uh, improving transparency, for bringing in accountability in the governance systems, and more and more citizens are trying to, uh, citizens have a wish and desire to play a greater role in the policy making process in order to ensure that whatever the government does for the citizen, and what, in whatever way the government use, spends the taxpayers' money is done in a more responsible manner, in a more accountable manner. So to this objective, ICT has a big role to play considering the challenges that we have. And I'll be giving a brief overview of how this is being planned as part of the National E-Governance Plan. The, being part of the government, very often we feel that why is it that in spite of the, in spite of the efforts which are being made at various levels in the government, for doing what we are supposed to do. Still, the pu public perception about government is not good. Very often, we come across uh, stories like this, which uh, in the media, which says that uh, the headline says all, ki, like all is not well, ki, like about the bureaucracy, we do not enjoy a very good uh, image in the society. Or uh, where, where, where we are regarded not only in the region, but uh, in Asia, we don't have a very good uh, rankings. Or stories like this, which, uh, which make fun of what we are doing. And uh, I just had these caricatures, which I thought for a pre-lunch session, it should be should set the tone so that we will be able to appreciate what I talk in the second part uh, much better. Or like this, like uh, this is all that we see very often. But it's not that uh, these things are limited to to our country. Even in other countries, when I travel, I look across and find cartoons which says that we are insulated by layers of bureaucracy. Or this, like uh, in Saudi Arabia, where for a government officer, a World Cup match is more important than what the citizens are waiting for. So the question comes as to why is it so? Why is it that the image of the government is what it is today? When we find, when we try to explore and try to look into the reasons for the same, we find that unfortunately the systems that we have, the processes that we have built in, requires multiple interactions of a citizen with the government at various levels. For example, a study said that a farmer has to interact with eight departments and over a period of a year he has to have 40 interactions. And unfortunately, all these interactions are pretty complicated and the processes are so complex that the citizen does not know where to go, what to go do and uh, how to do. So that, that, that ultimately results in the image that we have. And similarly, the case for, uh, for other sectors of the economy, whether it's a small industry or a medium industry or an urban citizen, it has too many interactions, too many people, uh, complicated procedures which people don't know. Then the question comes in that can, is it, is it a very pessimist kind of environment or can something be done? Or can these things be ever improved? Or can we streamline the interactions which a citizen has with the government? So, so to this, we come to like over a period of last few years, a lot of initiatives have been taken place, uh, have uh, been adopted by the government. And what we find in the policy making domain is that overall we are moving from a right, uh, from, to a rights based policy framework in which we are all familiar of the right to information, the right to employment, which NREGS gave, the right to education, right to food, and right to services which are being proposed. So, so what the, RTI we are very well familiar with. In 2005, this act was passed, and now it is, it is a right for a citizen to get any information that he desires. And within a period of uh, 30 days, the government has to provide this information. Then similarly, the right to employment came in with the National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme, wherein it's a right for every citizen, every citizen to demand for work and get work for 100 days in a year. 
So, so this is uh, again an initiative which has been taken up uh, under the rights-based policy framework. Then the third most important thing which was done last year in 2009 was the right to free and compulsory education which came in, which says that every child up to the age of 14 years will be given education which will be compulsory, mandatory and the government will have an obligation to set up an educational institution which will uh, give him education for, for, uh, for, for the minimum uh, for till the age of 14. Then uh, the, the right to food is being proposed, which is going to give a right for every citizen to get food grains at a subsidized rate at uh, 2 rupees kgs for wheat and rice for 3 rupees kg. And the most important that is now being enacted, in which ICT is playing a big role, is right to public services, in which uh, SLEs, service level agreements are being defined, like when a citizen charter is there, how do you ensure that whatever service a citizen is seeking from the government is given in the time frame which is envisaged? Okay, like if it is, uh, if a birth certificate is given in seven days, then he gets in seven days. And then ICT ensures that the date of receipt of the application and the date of issue of the certificate is actually counted. And many states in our country have actually legalized this. It has already been done in Madhya Pradesh, Delhi, Bihar, Maharashtra is on the lines. And so uh, Punjab has passed an act recently, uh, which says that public services, citizens will have a right to get public services. And it also defines the service levels to which these services will be given. And now, the government of India, at the government of India level, we are proposing an electronic service delivery act, which proposes all government departments to deliver all public services electronically within a period of five years. So it will, it will be a mandate uh, enforced by a law, which will ensure that all public services citizens will be able to access electronically within a period of five years, so that the entire problem is resolved. So, so now when we, when we look into improving service delivery, the key issues which are, uh, when we look at uh, ICT for service delivery, then we find that why service delivery is not what it should be. It's because the procedures, very often there is mystification of procedures. Very often people sitting in this room, I don't know how many of you have driving licenses and all of you have driving licenses. How many of you actually know that they are right procedure to get a driving license? Because most of us have actually not followed the right procedure to get a driving license. We have relied on somebody who helps us to do it at a particular cost. So, the procedures are mystified, so we don't know how, how to get a public service. Then we find that at every service delivery point, there are long queues. It's for service delivery, it requires multiple visits. Outcomes are in suspense, so automatically gatekeepers come in, which will, uh, which, who will ensure the quality of service becomes very poor. Then service becomes a matter of mercy and not of a right. And then intermediaries come in and exception becomes the rule and corruption, bribery, all these aspects come in in service delivery uh, paradigm. So, the question then comes is that uh, can anything be done? So if we look at across the space, there are certain initiatives in which uh, these uh, problems have been resolved. One, one very important uh, project which, was in, which has been implemented successfully by user of ICT is the land records project in the state of Karnataka, of those of you who are familiar with. Earlier, the land records was, uh, was the domain of only the village accountant. He had access to all the records. Service from Bangalore, you've been knowing about this, sir. Rajiv Chalwa, sir, has done this. And from here, we went down to a system in which uh, uh, records have been digitized. They are available online. They are available in a kiosk at a, on a payment of fixed fee. And you actually have a right to get a copy of your own record of rights, which earlier it was not there. And still in many states of the country, now it's being ramped up across the country. But still, there are, there are regions in this country, there are states in this country in which to get a copy of your property, your title, your record is not very easy. Other good example which I always cite in which uh, technology has helped in service delivery is the railways. We all know a few years back this was what it was <laughs> and to get a ticket for the return journey or for onward journey was very difficult. From here we have moved on to a situation when actually more people today are booking tickets online and, uh, and uh, being facilitated by use of technology, by use of computers, mobile based uh, services, SMS based <coughs> services which are being used across the country by people. Similarly other initiatives, smaller initiatives also happened in public grievances wherein from earlier going to a public office to file a grievance, now you can file online from a kiosk which is there in the marketplace. So these all things are, these initiatives are happening. INDG is a project which has been taken by CDAC in which a lot of information with regard to which citizens are concerned with, whether it's education, health, agriculture, rural development, this information has been put in and services have been detailed there. So INDG.in gives a gamut of information with regard to various government departments which is accessible to people today in not only in English but in multiple languages. This has been made possible. So, so what does this mean? This means that ICT can help in better delivery of services. It can help in reaching the unreached. It can reduce the cost of services. 
it can bring in responsiveness reliability accountability and transparency increase in uh, and then the corruption also goes down this has been found by several uh, impact assessment studies so so very often i use this uh, like today ict is like uh, is like uh, the mouse that we use is like uh, those of you uh, most of you are familiar with this in our mythology lord ganesha is regarded to be the um, remover of all obstacles and he rides on a mouse and similarly the mouse today that we have is giving the pentium power avatar of the mouse is giving a lot of power to the to the people in getting services in demanding for the services and what does it do it can cut the red tape it can uh, take the wind out of touts which are there all of our public offices and public accountability and responsiveness seem to be within the reach of the citizen this is what it does so this entire background brings us to the context of e government and what we are what the railways have done or what bhumi has done or what uh, public grievances solutions are doing is bringing us to what we call e government which is transforming the all aspects of government and uh, when when we look at e government the challenge that three only 3 minutes okay then i will rush through the challenges of our country of being complex multiple languages democratic institutions is there uh, is there for all of us we know that then the national e governance plan what it does is that it says that the national e governance plan for which we are working for of which all these initiatives are part says that all government services will be made accessible to the common man at a place near his locality at an affordable cost which will meet all his basic needs so this is what ngp does and the strategy is to not to focus on technology the ngp doesn't focus on technology we don't say that whether you use a proprietary technology or an open source technology or this technology or that technology it says that just focus on services and service levels Okay, what services are going to be delivered, and to what service levels these services are going to be delivered? It's primarily, the projects are implemented by individual departments and state governments, and we have an imp apex uh, implementation framework which ensures that projects are delivered in a um, in a systematic manner. And I will just have uh, this animation which will say how the whole thing is happening. What happens is that, ki, like, when a citizen is to access a service, we have several pieces of this architecture that we have. This is the. Uh, I think I will stop after this slide. This is the core. The data center is that we is being set up in all the 35 states. This is the core of e-governance that we have, in which all applications and data are hosted, and then all public offices at the back end are connected with a state-wide area network, which is an optical fiber-based network, which connects all offices from the state headquarters to a uh, down to the block level where the services are actually the last mile of service delivery happens. And a city, and then we are setting up a network of 100,000 common services centers, which are set up in the rural areas of this country. and these cscs are are front end delivery outlets which are like cyber cafes which will have a computers which will have broadband connectivity which will have people who will be operating these centers and and what happens is that when a citizen wants a service about anything he would come to a csc and he will seek information about this service suppose he wants a ration card then he will come to the csc the csc fellow will log on to the state portal will pull in the information about how to get a ration card from the state portal and this information or application form which is required for accessing a service will be delivered at the csc which is connected through the internet to the data center at the csc after he has filled in the form it can be electronically submitted from the csc it will go to the state data center where there is a state service delivery gateway what the gateway does is that it does the routing so citizen need not know where the service is being delivered but the routing happens at the state service delivery gateway and the his application is routed to the right back end through the state wide area network which is the uh, government intranet so the service delivery request reaches the last mile where the processing is done suppose it has to be done about a verification of an address or about uh, his income proof or something the back end verification will be done manually and then the final output a certificate or a document or a whatever is to be delivered will be pushed back from the back end through the same network uh, to the common service center and and then he will get the service at the csc only so the idea is that without going to a public office you can go to a kiosk in your village and you will be able to access the service and we have integrated it with the with the with the uid authentication because the unique id project is also being implemented as part of the ngp in which a citizen's identity whether regarding who he is he is proved by the so by a check from the uid server and then a interface with the with the mobile phone is also there with the growing increase of mobile phone that we have that when a service is delivered or the status of the service can be tracked with the help of a mobile phone so this is the overall architecture in which the whole thing is being delivered 
So I will, uh, since for want of time, I will not go into details of the kind of projects which we are uh, implementing. It covers the entire domain of public service delivery in which uh, state government services, central government services and integrated services are being delivered. There is a provision of capacity building and training because without that this, such a project of such a scale cannot be implemented and uh, standards, quality, awareness, communication, assessment is a very big part in which whatever projects are taken up, ultimately assessment is done, a citizen impact assessment on what impact it has made to the citizen, whether it has led to any improvement in the governance parameters or not. So these impact assessments are done, their reports are uh, uploaded on our website, will be there. And the road ahead, what we are planning next is the, the most important legislation, as I mentioned, we are planning is the electronic service delivery law, which will mandate all public, all departments to deliver their services electronically in the next five years. And also an open data for framework in which all data which has been created by any department by use of public fund will be put on an open uh, on an open data platform and uh, citizens departments uh, entrepreneurs will be able to use that data and build mashable applications on top of that to deliver value added services to citizens so these are the broad uh, outlines i think i am out of time so i would just and uh, the last slide is this like beginning from what the newspapers talked of now especially on our act at least they are saying that even activists are welcoming online delivery of public services so i will conclude with this Thank you.